think we have our quorum. Um, and I am going to call the meeting to order and uh, ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Um, Todd, I hear you uh, in the chambers. Could you introduce uh, or indicate who's present in the chambers? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have Vicki Schneider, Chad, Lori Serkey, and Carrie Ahrens, and then Scott behind the, behind the wheel. All right, very good. Um, our next order of business is a motion to approve the minutes of January 11th. Move to approve. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Chair votes aye. Let's move on to 3.1, which is a an exciting resolution authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the site lease agreement between Wisconsin Power and Light and the city of Sheboygan regarding a solar voltaic generating facility. Chad, is that yours? It is. So thank you. Um, thank you. Madam Chair, so this document before you is to is to lease a portion of property, uh, an 80 acre parcel in the Sheboygan Business Center. Um, this parcel would be directly west of the large NEMAC manufacturing facility off of Gateway Drive. Um, the parcel right now has not been very marketable, if you will, because it has a large stormwater detention pond on its street frontage. So Alliant Energy. Um, we showed the parcel to Alliant Energy when they announced a customer-hosted solar energy uh, collaboration that they were doing with municipalities. And given that it's close to the overhead power lines that go into the Edgewater uh, generating plant and close to some substations, they found this property uh, acceptable to construct a one megawatt solar generating facility. Um, so under the terms of this lease, they would lease the property for 25 years. I believe there's three five-year renewals, and they will pay us a sum total of $45,000 over monthly payments for uh, leasing the property. So everything else has been worked out between the city attorney's office and their attorneys and um, finds it acceptable to move forward. All right. Uh, questions for Chad. Madam Chair, I've got a question. Sure. Thank you. Hey, Chad, can you uh, go over the payment schedule again one more time? Was that $45,000 over the 30-year time span or 25-year time span? Is that $45,000 a year? It's $45,000 a year, which will, equivalent, will be uh, paid out in equal payments over 12 months. Um, there, I think, is a... There might be an escalator in there after a few years uh, for changes, but it, it's at 45000 46000 right now. Thank you. Right. Madam Chair. I've, got, I've got a question. It was a 20-year lease renewable three times? It's a 25-year lease renewable three times in five-year increments. Got it. Thank you. Jim? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Chad, I'm, st I'm having trouble visualizing exactly where this is going to be. And now you said NEMAC. That's not the NEMAC plant across from Acuity, is it? No, it's NEMAC's main manufacturing plant that's in the Sheboygan Business Center. So um, okay, Barron's okay. Parkway and Gateway Drive would be the intersection uh, where this parcel would be. So if I'm driving down South Business Drive and I look over to the right when I get out of the business park area, I'm not actually going to be able to see it from South Business Drive? You are not going to be able to see it from South Business Drive, but you will be able to see it from South Taylor Drive or I-43. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, one other thing, uh, just wanted to... 
touch base with attorney Adams. Uh, Chuck, you're completely comfortable with this agreement. I read it over in some detail yesterday and I didn't really have any questions. It's very lengthy, but uh, you're very comfortable with all the, uh, all of the details of it. Yeah, we, we spent a significant amount of time going back and forth on, you know, on some things and they were very cooperative. So. Thank you. Other comments? Questions? No, oh, this is terrific. Um, so we need a motion to uh, recommend uh, that we uh, execute the SAAS. Nope, I'm on the wrong. Sorry about that. I'm on the wrong. Uh, on the wrong uh, uh, <laughs> action item. So we are looking for a motion to execute the site lease agreement between Wisconsin Power Light Power and Light and the city. Is there such a motion? I'll move. Chair. All right. And did I hear a second? Either one, Robert or myself um, had that, uh, the, the first or the second. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Very good. Um, moving along to the SAAS service agreement. Um, 3.2 is a resolution authorizing the Director of Planning and Development to execute the SAS services agreement between Benovate for Neighborly Software. Todd, is that yours? Actually, Chad will, Chad? Chad will, yeah, Chad will talk a little bit and then I'll, I'll come in at the end. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. So this is to implement some software that the city administrator alluded to in his state of the city address. Um, this software will be used between the finance department and city development, and it'll be used primarily to administer the community development block grant, grant program that we get from HUD on a yearly basis. So this started out as looking at the options of trying to find some better loan tracking software because as, as a city administrator alluded to in his presentation, we're trying to get loans and other things off of the AS400. Um, so the plan was to buy, to look for some loan tracking software and as we were going through uh, interviewing vendors, uh, it came, the group thought that it made sense to look at it for a little bit wider uh, piece than just loan tracking software, but to look at it for tracking all of the demographic data, all of the loans and different things that we do with the community development block grant program. So this software is specific to CDBG funds. Um, they, this software has an import to the federal system, so we don't have to double enter all the demographic and income data that we do on a daily basis. And it'll also allow us to track public service applicants, public facility uh, projects, loans, um, environmental reviews, all the federal stuff that we go through on a daily basis and right now are pretty much managing on spreadsheets and with paper files. So the goal is to make this more real time, particularly for the loan tracking piece so that our loan applicants can get to the loan history online and see where their loan stands and they can also uh, request payoffs and different things and kind of manage their loan portfolio without always having to come through the finance or city development departments. Um, so this is, we'll fund this with CDBG uh, federal dollars on a yearly basis and it um, will kind of, st it'll streamline the operations of how we do things today between the city finance department and the city development department. All right, questions for Chad or Todd, do you want to go ahead first? Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to kind of point out to the committee that um, as Chad had pointed out, this is, this is going to be a great asset for uh, city development and for the finance department. As I had, I had stated in the um, state of the city, we are looking to utilize technology to improve our processes. This is one of those processes that from a, as a past alder, um, looking at our finance and personnel, talking about loans, this is one of those uh, um, opportunities where we're gonna get it off the AS400, we're gonna be able to modernize it we're gonna be able to extend the services that it, it actually covers as Chad had alluded to. 
and we're going to be able to um, use technology to improve our processes. And it's a collaboration between development and the finance department. So this is a really good example of how we're going to use a, pro a technology to um, bring the development department in with uh, finance and be able to take care of our constituents at a much, much higher level. Um, they can even set themselves up so that they can go online if, if they choose to. And with a username and password, they'll be able to actually look at, at their, uh, their loans that they have with the city. So um, I'm hoping to have support from the, from the committee and the council and move forward on this, on this software. Thank you. Questions, Bert? I, I have a question. We've heard so much about units. Mm -hmm. it, does it make sense to have a distinct set of software for development and loan off of the MUNIS platform? Now, I'm sure you vetted up the yin-yang, but <laughs> just describe why. I can explain that, Madam Chair. Um, we, we, thank you. We brought in uh, a, a company called Baycor, and they helped us with the vetting process. We also, in, in our office, we also reached out to local municipalities to find out um, whom they were using, whether they were using Munis, um, whether they were using their own homegrown system or other, other um, programs like Neighborly. And so through, through, our, through Baycor, they actually had made some recommendations, which we, we reviewed two of them. And through our, our, our search with municipalities in, in, within Wisconsin, we found out that um, there was quite a collaboration. Munis is not, um, I hate to say it, it's one of those, a jack of all trades and a master of none. Munis has loan programs, but we were also looking for something that was going to be able to help us, not just with loans, but also with, um, as Chad had alluded to, our CDGB funds and our grants and things like that. So uh, this program, Neighborly, is, is very good as far as it integrates with Munis. So it's a connection so that the information that finance needs, they'll be able to use it through Munis. And the neighborly part, the development team will be able to use that with the implementation with the, with the uh, constituents and the interface that the constituents will see will be through the actual neighborly program. Chad, was there anything you wanted to add to that? The only thing I would add is the Munis platform did not have a very robust online application or online uh, real-time kind of payment system. So we were really... Finance right now spends a lot of time on issuing payoff letters and trying to get people loan histories and all of that stuff. And this will allow people to do that themselves if they log into the system. And Munis did not have those capabilities. The other thing is, is we're not doing, besides uh, receding revenues from our loans, that's probably the only piece that we're putting currently into the Munis program. But as Todd alluded to, we're doing a lot of other management of different grants. And, and those that have been on the Finance Committee know that every year we come before you and we allocate funds to nonprofits and all of that kind of stuff. So all that has to be tracked, and this system will allow us to do that. Thank you. So I just have uh, probably a question for Todd. Um, and I think one of the best things that we have started to do and that you are working and, and, and you and, and Daniela are working on is really moving us completely off of um, ASA 400 and into Munis. So this is a separate system, which I understand and I think it makes perfect sense, but ultimately when the full transference is made, um, how many extra computer program programs do you think we will have in addition to Munis? To get off the floor. If you that, have any idea, you may not. Yeah, um, Chair, that's that's kind of a, a, a difficult this, um, question to answer at this point. Um, I guess a different way to answer the question would be to help educate the, the committee to understand that Munis is our ERP system. 
So it's our enterprise resource planning, and it is typical within the private sector and in, within municipalities that you're gonna have kind of the, the core, which is the ERP system, whether it's SAP, JD Edwards, any of those. But typically you're still gonna have offshoots of programs that work, um, that are more specialized in, in handling different types of pro processes. So as an example, uh, when we looked at the neighborly program, it was very high tech. It was very to, today and age. Um, compared to the, to the other one that was also recommended, they, they were, their technology was very, um, I'd say 10 to 15 years old as far as how it was formatted. It's the, the security levels are very high, but it was not very user friendly. So again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to bring in modules, whether it's through Munis or through third party that work with Munis to streamline things, but also to make it easier for our constituents and, and also for our, our employees and departments to function. So if we can pull more processes within a module and streamline things so that we're not touching it so many times, um, it, it makes a lot of sense when you look at it from that perspective. Um, there's a lot of things that go on behind the curtain that is very time consuming and we're trying to utilize technology to reduce, first off, you know, things having to be entered in multiple times, you have human error on that, and then making sure that, um, that we can pull more data out like Chad had mentioned, you know, for our state and federal requirements. So I can't answer the question today, um, and hopefully within the next six months I'll be able to. Thank you. Well, and I, I, I certainly didn't mean to put you on the spot. I, um, uh, this uh, program makes, uh, as I say, complete sense. Um, I'm just hoping that once we have Munis up and fully running, we don't have like a hundred extra software programs out there. It will I mean, this one makes complete sense. I have no problem with it at all, um, but it's just something to think about. I mean, I remember the days when Chuck probably remembers this, where there were 1,200 separate software programs that the city operated, um, and that you know paychecks went through three separate programs, and um, you know so. Even now, we're wildly ahead of that, but uh, uh, it, I'm just entranced with the idea <laughs> that we have that one big computer program in the sky, but I do understand the need for more specialized programs. Any other questions, comments? I've got a, got a couple questions, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Todd, Or uh, when you were looking at vendors, uh, and then you said you were looking at municipalities. Are there some municipalities that you talked to that are using the system? I, I believe that there were a couple. And Madison was also transitioning uh, to uh, and Belo to, I think to Beloit, Beloit and Oshkosh are going on it too. Yep. So, okay. so again. Uh, and another question. Go ahead. I was just gonna ask, I know, uh, Within the last year or two, we've had a couple items come before the Finance and Personnel Committee regarding personal property tax. Uh, how are we handling that? And is, is this an application that could be used to track our personal property taxes so that if somebody has a question like we did on a couple documents in the last year or so, that this would be helpful in tracking previous payments in that regard? Or is that a totally different animal? Jim, that is a totally different animal. I would be doing a cartwheel if I could actually have personal property at, um, controlled under neighborly. Um, <laughs> and I'm not good at cartwheels. The, the, the point is that we are trying to bring in as, you know, uh, different programs that specialize in things like, you know, like personal property. That is on our list and that's next um, in the sites to be addressed. But neighborly does not um, address that that situation, and that's really a municipal well, I, program. Municipal I thought, program. We, I thought maybe we could. I thought maybe we could sneak that in there for that fourteen grand or whatever we're paying. So <laughs> I agree. <laughs> we both would be doing Bruce, cartwheels then. <laughs> I want to see Todd do a cartwheel. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, I would just like to say. 
from from the development side of this equation, it would be delightful to be able to key in X, Y, Z, A, B, C, one, two, three, and have a report because we have struggled with those things in the past. So um, anything that helps us track our money and keep the feds happy, I'm happy to. Thank you. Any other comments, questions? I'll, right. make a motion, I'll make a motion to approve, Madam Chair. All right, so this is a I'll second that. motion to uh, uh, execute the uh, services agreement uh, with Benevate, Inc. Uh, we have a motion and second. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. Aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, let's move on to 3.3, .3, which is a notice of claim from Kaylee Reidenor. Chuck? So uh, this is just before you in order to file. This was merely a notice of claim, and uh, the time has passed for her to file her claim. And so the matter can be uh, filed as she has not done so. Do we have a motion to file? <clears throat> so moved. Okay. And I'll a second? A all right, we have a motion and second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. All right, moving down to 3.4, which is a resolution authorizing the city to execute an agreement, and I'm, I'm sorry, an amendment to the offer to purchase with Martin's trilling true value regarding the closing date. Chad, I assume that's yours. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So this is, you've seen this document before. This is a parcel of land that the city owns around Keel's um, auto repair shop just south of Trilling Hardware. Trilling is hoping in the future to build a new storage shed to bring a lot of the stuff that's stored in their parking lot under a roof um, adjacent to their property. So as, as the amendment or the original offer to purchase required, the city worked with Sheboygan County and their Brownfields program to assess the uh, extent of contamination on this property given that it is next to an old filling station. Um, and uh, after the phase one and phase two were uh, completed, there was some additional requirements that the uh, DNR has asked for Stantec, who is the county's consultant, to uh, do some further um, groundwater testing. So this document would extend the offer to purchase through the end of July. Uh, Stantec has informed us that they believe they can get case closure on this property by uh, June. Um, so we're looking for an approval to extend this to July, which would give us about a month to put together a closing and hopefully see the project move forward sometime in the fall of this year. Wonderful. Any questions? Is the binding go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Mark. Is the binding acceptance state on this one going to make it for the uh, council meeting in enough time? It says February 1st. The council meets on February. The, the council meets on February first. Sorry. Yeah. So uh, we did. We did speak to. I spoke with uh, Attorney Sinkel uh, from Rody Dales, who represents them. And the idea here was, you know, if, if for some reason we went past the date, it's really our ability to get out of the deal. Not so much, you know, that they want this deal to go through. Um, and in order to make this go through as quickly as possible, that's why we directly referred it. You know, we'll have them, well, the council does meet on the first and, and I think Chad is already aware that he's gonna be getting the signatures that night and probably forwarding them over to them. They may not actually receive it to the second, but we're good. We, we've discussed all those possibilities already. I have a question for Ch I have a question for Chad. Uh, Chad, is there any indication that any that any environmental problems on that property might be coming from leaching from that gas station on the corner? That's where that's the suspecting, but it's hard to say that for sure because, um, yeah. So that's that's the thought, and the DNR has been more than willing to work with us. They did upgrade some tanks and, and do some stuff at that location, but given that there is a filling station right next door, um, I'm thinking that's probably where it's come from. But it doesn't seem like it's 
going to be, unless the soil, the sample that they do, the groundwater sampling in the next month really shows um, different results. It's just, the, the DNR is just looking for a, a little bit additional documentation and it sounds like they were supportive of moving forward with the case closure. We Too bad. Note, we should also note that that property was the uh, site of the casket company, the Sheboygan Casket Company. And uh, which was uh, foreclosed upon for property taxes by Sheboygan County. So there was a fair amount of contamination just from the preparation of caskets. So, um, she is right. so there's blame all around. And uh, good to know that it's moving forward. Jim, did you have one? Well, I was just, I was just going to mention it. Uh, it's uh, too bad that we couldn't get this done for Tina Wick before she uh, closed her zipper shop on the, in, in December. Well, we sure tried. We did try, we did try for Tina, but we did. You have no idea. So, um, with that in mind, any other questions, comments? If not, could I have a uh, a, a motion to uh, authorize the execution of the amendment to offer to purchase? So moved. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Um, that does it for us. Our next regular meeting is February 8th. Will we all be here? Where else would we be, I guess, is another question. I'll be waiting for my second COVID shot. I'm getting my first one tomorrow. Oh, good for you. So, um, very good. Um, we will... Uh, we will see you all on February 8th. Could we have a motion to, to um, adjourn? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Third, I guess. If there's, if there's no further discussion, all in favor state aye. 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 Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all. It's 5.01. Uh, I'm going to call the meeting to order, and if Mary Lynn can jump in if she gets here. Uh, roll call. Uh, Boren is here. Uh, Marcus Saviglio? Present. Uh, Roberta Panetsky? Trey Mitchell? Here. We have a quorum. Uh, for those in the uh, for those at uh, City Hall, uh, if you want to uh, stand and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance, will do. I pledge allegiance. Todd, do you want to lead? Todd, do you want to lead the pledge? Yes, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Yes. Thank you, Todd. Uh, could you tell the rest of the committee who else is in the council chambers, please? Okay. I'll have Scott send it to you. We're all, we, st we just started. Thanks. Bye. Jim? Yes. Uh, Mary Lynn just called me while we were pledging. Um, she can't find the link, so I'll have Scott send the link to Mary Lynn. And then okay. she, so, but I would just continue in the, in the meantime. All right. Uh, could you tell us who's in the uh, council chambers? Yes, I will. Tara Dewey, um, Vicki Schneider, myself, and Carrie Aarons, and Scott, okay. of course. And uh, it looks like we have quite a few guests uh, tonight, so we'll uh, introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Alderman Jim Bourne of the 10th District, and I'm Vice Chairman of the Finance and Personnel Committee. And I am Roberta Felicki Paneski, Alderman in District 2.
Hi, I'm Marcus Savaglio, Alderman District, uh, Alder Person District 5, excuse me. I'm Trey Mitchell, Alder Person District 9. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the uh, uh, to uh, item number 2.1 on the agenda, which is approval of the minutes from the December 28th, 2020 meeting. I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. 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 Uh, we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Vice Chair votes aye. I see that Mary Lynn has arrived. Mary Lynn, we're down to number 3.1 if you'd like to uh, take over. I'm really sorry that link, I, I think it's been abducted by aliens and I really apologize. So, all right. So uh, 3.1. Um, who would like to take that? I, I can first speak to uh, the first piece of it, which is just simply that when you make the uh, motion, there will need to be uh, um, an amendment, a motion to amend. Uh, so after th th this really went to council probably too early, uh, it went before it had been completely negotiated with the other parties involved. And so there is one change in here that was uh, requested by Kohler Credit Union that everybody's agreed to, uh, and it has to do with the whole harmless indemnification clause. But once uh, once we get to that, I will provide you the language for the um, amendment uh, before you make the final motion. All right, so we are looking for a motion to uh, authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the agreement between the city, Lakeland University, and Kohler Credit Union for the Memorial Day Parade. Do we have such a motion? So move. And a second. Second, second Boren. All right. And then Chuck, what are you looking for in terms of a, an yeah, amendment? Yeah. So the amendment would be uh, to amend the agreement so as to replace section 4H in the original agreement, uh, the attached agreement. Uh, to provide that the hold harmless indemnification uh, paragraph would read as follows. To the extent permitted by law, launch shall hold harmless, defend, and or indemnify KCU and the city from any and all claims, actions, suits, charges, awards, fines, labor disputes, charges, or costs of any kind or character, including attorney's fees and court costs that arise or may arise out of launch's performance or non-performance of any term, obligation, service, or condition as set forth in this agreement. All right. Um, Chuck, can we do this by a, an agreement by the maker of the motion to so amend the, the original motion? Or do you want a separate do you want a separate motion to amend? Probably cleaner to have that separate motion to amend, but since I read it, we can just say so moved. <laughs> so do we have uh, <laughs> do we have a motion to amend the agreement as read? Uh, I move to amend the agreement as read. Second. Four. All right. So we're going to vote on the amendment. Are there any questions or concerns? Bert? I have a question. Um, I'm a little bit confused because the language always states Lakeland University, and there is there is a signatory that is um, seems to be affiliated with another entity in there, and I don't have the document in front of me, I'm sorry, but is is it really Lakeland or is it Kim Libum and Kim Libum's business? Uh, so Actually, that was asked to be amended as well. Um, when I sent that back to the mayor, this is a this is a Lakeland University venture, and Launch is the student-run business venture owned by Lakeland University. I work for Lakeland University, and I mentor the businesses. So this is indeed a Lakeland University agreement. And the document, that, yeah, that, that's all been updated. That was all updated long before. You may be confused by the fact that the, what, what, as you read the agreement, Lakeland University is referred to as launch. It's launch at Lakeland University is the, is, is the party. All right, so by virtue of the motion to approve and then the motion to amend, 
Uh, Chuck, in your opinion, is that pretty crystal clear? Do we have any issues about who the yeah, parties are or what the responsibilities are? No issues with who, who the parties are and the responsibilities. The main change was just color credit union wanted some different language on, on the hold harmless at all. And realistically, the city's position is there's no change. It's just written differently. Okay. Bert, are you satisfied with the answer? Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. So let us vote on the amendment to provide the indemnification agreement, uh, unless there are any other questions or concerns. I, I had a, uh, this is Alderman Boren, Madam Chair. I just wanted to ask Kim Leibam a couple of questions about her launch group, uh, what they've well, been. Uh, Jim, let's let's vote on the amendment All right. and, that of, okay. and then we can go to the body of the motion itself. All right, so, fine. Any other questions or concerns regarding the amendment? Hearing none, all in favor state aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. The amendment passes and the uh, agreement as amended is before us. So go ahead, Jim. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Kim, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit more about the launch group, uh, how many students are involved in it. Is this going to be their first project in the community? What other projects are they, are you having, thinking of having them be, be involved in? And also, is there any kind of a coordination with the Kohler Credit Union as far as past practices in running the parade uh, that would be helpful? Thank you. Good question. Thank you. And I appreciate you asking them. Let me address the first question, which is uh, launch and its infrastructure. Launch began uh, on May 10th of 2020, so it's a relatively new endeavor. However, in the, the short months that we have been operational, we have eight student leaders who are operating five different businesses right now. We actually are profitable, so believe it or not, we were able to start some businesses that didn't have any startup costs or any expenses to them. So um, we are, we started conservatively and that's, that's paying dividends. As far as what we are doing within the community, we actually have just been approved to launch an independent campus shop, which we will be operating on campus from an event standpoint we are contracted to run the Memorial Day Parade, which we're talking about here. We will be running the, um, the Gus Macker, the Boys and the Girls Clubs is no longer um, engaging in that activity. So Launch is now going to be running that with the Gus Macker um, organization. We are running the Blasters Golf Tournament this summer. And um, we are also running a concession stand at Road America. So that's the event side of the business that, that really <laughs> took off kind of quickly. We also are managing a rental property that we um, that, that the university owns. And we are, fingers crossed, um, going to be closing on a business that we are actually purchasing uh, on the 30th of January that we have been negotiating for several months. So we actually are looking to conclude our event side of the business with um, over $100,000 profit by the end of the summer. And I, I think anybody who knows anything about you know, new businesses, that's a, I think that's a good feat for uh, a year to actually end the year with the profit. From the other side of your question, asking how we've been cooperating with Cola Credit Union, Cola Credit Union and Laura are very easy to work with. They have shared all of their documentation with us. We have everything that had been created both by um, Laura as well as the, the person who had run the Memorial Day Parade for years past. And we have reorganized that and assigned our timeline and uh, work to it. And the woman who is going to be leading the parade, her name is Allie Wilson. She is an absolutely outstanding senior. She is studying organizational development and leadership. She's interested in pursuing a career in um, athletic management from a operational side of the house. So um, I have complete faith in her. Now the students do not operate by themselves. So I mentor or you might want to say, I control everything that they're doing, but because they're students, they don't know how to run businesses and they need that partnership. And that's my responsibility. Thank you. Any other sure. questions? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion, please state aye. 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 
Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Well, just Laura and Kim, and um, just thank you so much for all of your assistance with this really important parade. And hopefully, um, in May, we'll all be able to stand, uh, you know, <laughs> close together on the sidewalks with our winter jackets on and uh, enjoy <laughs> enjoy the parade. So, but really, thank you so much. And Kim, congratulations on your amazing program. That's really that's really thank terrific. You. Yeah, thanks for your support. We're really looking forward to making sure and proud. Yeah, you will. Um, now, my let me just look. Well, by jinkies, that's the end of our meeting. Um, we are next meeting on January 25th. Uh, do we have any quorum issues for that? It's the great thing about nobody going anywhere. Very good. Uh, can we have a motion to adjourn? I'll move. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, we have a motion and second. All in favor, uh, please signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. We are adjourned. Thank you all so much. And again, my apologies. All right.